The lecture will be uh, concerned with the regulatory framework and ethics of animal research. Whenever we are doing a research work on animals, uh, we seek two things. Is this research is useful and relevant to a human? And is it permissible for that species, which is the animal, to suffer pain and complication to achieve a benefit to the human being? We have three types of research. Basic research, which will going to study the animal themselves, like behavior and development. The second type is using the animal as a model for human disease, to study that disease, the mechanism, development, and so on. And the third type to use the animal for testing of toxicity. They are testing the toxicity of drugs over that animal. So it will be uh, suffering uh, from uh, the potential hazards, okay, from that toxins, and that toxins, uh, we want to know if it is uh, harming the human being or harming the environment. Whenever we are starting a research, we are going to a statisticians to calculate the numbers of human being or animal involved in that research. But in spite of this, they cannot answer the following. What is the nature, duration of pain, suffering distress to that animal, and how many animals can be used in that procedures and other activities? So the aim of these guidelines or frameworks to ensure an ethical, merciful treatment to animals while facilitating legitimate scientific research involving them Experimentation on animals will be carried out for the purpose of advancement to a new drug or new uh, operation or new prognostic material to improve the human life, to prolong the human life, alleviating suffering of them. The experiment should be designed with minimum number of animals that will be give you a statistical valid results. If there is any alternative methods than animal, you should go in for these alternative methods. Whenever you are using the animal, there may be pain. If the pain is minimum and suffering is minimum, this is okay. But if it is painful procedures or it necessitates uh, surgical interference, please consider appropriate sedation, analgesics, and anesthesia. And the persons who are engaged in animal experimentation should have a moral responsibility for the welfare of that animal. After their finishing their experiments, they should care about that animal if they need a post-operative care, uh, if they need euthanasia, if they need treatment, whatever the condition uh, at that time. The investigators are responsible for the aftercare, as I told you, for rehabilitation of animals. And in certain situations, we need to euthanize that animal. When it is paralyzed, unable to perform his natural function, when he is suffering a lot of pain, when he is dangerous, to the human being or other animals, if he is inducing certain disease or infectious disease in that animal, it, it will lead to uh, uh, spreading of infection. So at that time, euthanization of that animal is a must. The cost of the aftercare and rehabilitation of that animal is part of the cost of the research. The living condition of the animal should be appropriate for their speeches and contribute to the health and comfort. 
This means the facilitation in housing, in cleaning that house, it is appropriate. It is, uh, there is an enough space for that animal. Uh, it is, uh, that animal is uh, supervised by a veterinary for their feeding, for their uh, uh, general condition and their health condition. There is a principle which called three R's, replacement, reduction, and refund. This should be performed in any animal research. The first is replacement, which there is a method to avoid the using of the animal or to replacing the use of the animal. This means we can use technology, we can use another species, okay, which is not suffering a lot. The replacement may be a full replacement. This means we used human tissue, cells, uh, computer met methods uh, or models, something like this. Or partial replacement where we use some animals and based on current scientific thinking are not considered capable of experiencing suffering, which include invertebrate like dorsophila. The second R, which is the reduction, means you are minimizing the number of animals used per experiment. Appropriate design of the experiment will lead to uh, decreasing uh, the number of the animal used and there will be adding to the knowledge base. Reduction includes method to allow information per animal. Each animal you can have a maximized knowledge from each of them. Okay, uh, example of those imaging modalities which allow longitudinal measurements in the same animal to be taken. But this is, uh, doesn't mean we are increase the suffering of that animal by repeating its use. And sharing the data and resources between research groups and organization can be contribute to the reduction. And the third R is refinement. There is method which minimize animal suffering and improve welfare of that animal. Advancing welfare of that animal by exploiting the latest in vivo technology and by improving the understanding of the impact of welfare on scientific outcome. For laboratory animal facility, the housing and the veterinary care, let us start with the veterinary care. Adequate care will be good for all animals. There must be a specified or veterinary person trained and experienced for uh, the use of lab laboratory animal in science and medicine. Daily observation of that animal can be accomplished by certain person other than the veterinarian. Okay, however, the direct supervision is needed from that veterinarian. Uh, all animals should be acquired lawfully. This, if we mean, this means whenever you are importing that animal, it should be by law uh, and according to specific guidelines. A health surveillance program for screening to this incom incoming animal should be uh, acquired and uh, it is assessed as regard the quality, method of transportation, speeches, and so on. And whenever these animals arrive to your lab, please quarantine this animal until full stabili stabilization and it will be depend upon the appropriate speeches and circumstances. This quarantine process you are taking this new animal and put it in uh, cages, testing for their microbial status. They may be ill, okay? Uh, the, the, this quarantine is very important uh, for small animals. It is one week for large animals up to six weeks. Uh, for non-human primates, this quarantine will prevent exposure of human to this uh, zoonotic infections and the period for quarantine may be vary from two to three months upon the reaction uh, for TB testing. 
whatever the duration of uh, the quarantine to that newly animal, it should be given, even if it's free, to stabilize that animal as regards psychological uh, manifestation and physiology and nutrition. Uh, the length of stabilization will depend upon the type and duration of animal transportation and the species, of course. The physical separation of animals by species is recommended. Put every speech in different room. And take care of their uh, laminar flow units, cages, and ventilation, and so on. Sometimes we don't have the facility to separate the speeches in each speech in each room. But if you have to put two speeches in the same room, please choose them according to the common or similar pathogen status and their behavioral, uh, behavioral uh, compatibility. Uh, besides the veterinarian, you need a personnel to take care uh, of that animal and animal house facility. All animals should be observed for signs of illness or injury or abnormal behavior. Uh, this means you need a frequent observation, okay? Uh, if they are in post-operative recovery or they are ill, they should be separated. And uh, beside the separation, you should be followed up for treatment, for uh, recovery, for being free from any pathogen to avoid transmission of that disease to another uh, uh, species. The post-mortem examination and signs of illness and distress or other deviation from normal health conditions in animals should be reported to ensure appropriate and timely delivery to veterinary a medical care. Animal care program require technical support. Institutions should employ people trained to lab animal science or provide for both formal on and on the job training to ensure effective implementation of their program. With regard to personal hygiene, it is essential that the animal care staff maintain a high standard of per personal cleanliness and personal uh, uh, hygiene. Facilities and supplies for meeting this obligation should be provided with appropriate personal protective equipment. Wear appropriate clothes whenever you are going to handle the animal. And these clothes should be disposable. Uh, these clothes will be supplied by the institution, of course. Uh, a commercial laundering service is acceptable in some situation if you cannot afford the disposable uh, wearing or the disposable clothing. Uh, this is important for decontamination and to avoid uh, transmission of any infectious disease. Uh, the washing and showering facility appropriate to the program should be available. Personnel should not be permitted to eat, drink, smoke, putting cosmetics or perfume in the animal room. They should finish the work with animal as early as possible and sit somewhere else outside the premises. A separate area or room should be made available for these purposes. If you are going to use the animal in hazardous uh, situation, like injection of uh, other uh, microbes or uh, uh, other viruses and so on. So the use of animal in such condition should be reviewed by both institution, biosafety committee and ethics committee as regard uh, the, the institution. Multiple surgical uh, procedures on single animal uh, is should be limited unless it is justified and approved by the Animal Ethics Committee. The duration of experiment shouldn't be prolonged more than three years unless it is justified.
As regards the physical restraint, sometimes we need to restrain the animal to collect samples, to do experimentation. So they should be allowed to adapt to that restraint and it should, shouldn't cause much distress to that animal. And this will depend upon the size and the designs for the animal being held and operated properly. Uh, the prolonged restraint of any animal, including the chairing of non-human primates, should be avoided unless essential to research objectives. Thank you. If the subject of research is an animal, so the purpose should be justified to, to use this animal. The species should be uh, suitable for your research, uh, the number of animals should be restricted. The number of the animals subjected to the experiment will be all used, okay? And the process will provide minimal pain and discomfort to the If there is a chronic pain is expected, by the end of the experimentation, the animal should be sacrificed by euthanasia. If there is surgical procedures, you should use anesthesia, okay, and after you are finishing your surgery, you should use a post-operative care and antibiotic and analgesic to that animal. The same animal should it be used in more than one experiment. And whenever you are sacrificing animals, they should be disposed in appropriate manner which is suitable for health and environmental concerns.